nicely getting uh, going here this afternoon. It's uh, our fault. <laughs> <laughs> um, my name is Jamie Anderson. For those of you who don't know me, I am the library director here at the Point Place Public Library. Thank you for coming out on a Easter Monday when everyone thinks everything is closed, yeah. especially when it's the government, but we are open um, and working. Um, we're here to talk about a strategic plan. Uh, we are embarking on uh, preparing the new strategic plan uh, that will come up for this year. It'll be a four-year plan. The previous strategic plan was a, a ten-year plan. Um, started in 2008 and ended last year. Um, we're, we're looking at, especially in the light of you know, recent announcements from uh, various ministries of, of budget cutbacks, the, you may have read in the, uh, the paper or uh, online, uh, SALS, which is the Southern Ontario Library Service, has had their budget slashed by 50% uh, last week, effective immediately. Um, they are a support service for us. Um, right now, that will affect um, our ability to supply into library loans for patrons. Um, we don't know what other cuts may be coming down the line. Right now, it's just into library loans. Um, what will most likely end up happening is those funds will need to be made up from somewhere else. Most of our funding, 85% of our funding, does come from the municipality, not from the province. There is a, a few large uh, grants that we get from the province, but most of our funding is from the municipality, so it is secure. We have not had our personal budget slashed, as some people have thought. Um, but kind of in that light, I think this is a really good time for us to be doing these public consultations. What we're wanting to find out is what are you wanting to see in the library service in, in well, Cajun, but throughout the city as well. Where do you see the library being? What do you see its role as being in the community over the next four or five years? Um, and I'm now going to hand things over to John and Greg from TCI Management Consultants. They're helping us put together the strategic plan. Thank you. Thanks very much, Jamie. And uh, let me just echo. Jamie's uh, comments, thanks all of you for coming out on this uh, Easter Monday, clearly a dedicated group to uh, participate in this session. We're very pleased to uh, be working with Cork Lakes Public Library on this project, and uh, we have something I think with eight of these uh, public consultation sessions planned, so we're doing everything we can to encourage as much uh, engagement as possible from the community. Um, just a quick look at the agenda. We'll give you a brief overview of the project, uh, a couple of little points on what we're finding, and we really like to encourage uh, you to engage in some discussion. Uh, so, just uh, as Jamie mentioned, the purpose of the plan, it's a, a four-year plan. It, it broadly looks at a number of uh, issues such as facilities, services, programs, technology, staffing to meet current and future needs. Um, we've done, based on our proposal, we uh, built in quite a lot of public consultation, uh, have met with a number of individual stakeholders, have met with the library board, council. We uh, visited all the branches uh, back in the, the depths of January on a very cold week, so that was uh, good fun. Uh, we were selected as part of a public tendering process. Uh, the team has expertise in libraries. Beth Ross, who's a member of our team, was a former uh, chief librarian in Huron County Public Library. We have Catherine Slimman, who was, uh, is an expert on uh, information technology in libraries. Uh, in addition, we have folks on the team who are uh, very knowledgeable about uh, facilities planning for libraries. Uh, this is just a, a quick um, kind of a graphic showing the hours of operation of the various branches. You are a unique library system, obviously, in that you have uh, 14 branches. Um, and uh, I think part of the challenge is that with a system like Kawartha Lakes, you do very well on kind of a limited budget. So the trick is to try to keep a lot of these branches going. Um, and uh, it's always a challenge to sort of adjust the hours of operation to uh, uh, when you have such a broad geographic area that's being covered. So you can see here in total you're looking at between 54 and 57 hours depending on the season. And I guess Bob Cajun here you're running at 39 hours a week. You can see that you're generally closed Sunday but uh, make a good effort to cover all the other hours of the week. 
Uh, this is just a, a map. Here's, um, maybe you're familiar with this, but uh, a lot of times people are only familiar with their local branches. They don't appreciate just how geographically dispersed and spread out you, you are. So it is kind of a, an interesting challenge. You, you're originally, of course, the amalgamation of uh, Victoria County, so you inherited a lot of public library branches, and they're kind of scattered in, uh, in a lot of the local hamlets and communities, including, of course, the larger centers of yourselves, Lindsay and, and Fenton Falls. And I, I didn't realize um, that, I guess your logo, your relatively new logo, is actually a sort of a... Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Join a map showing uh, which is a really of, neat uh, uh, for all these yeah. communities. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so our overall approach uh, is basically a three-phase process. The first is uh, involved a lot of data collection, as we mentioned. The second part, starting to get into that, is the actual development of the strategic plan and some of our thoughts with respect to that. Uh, and the final stages will be presenting to the various. Uh, uh, boards and council and uh, coming up with an implementation plan. Our approach in these projects is always to what we call cast the net wide to try to give as many folks as possible an opportunity to take part in the process. There's a number of ways that we've done that. This process will likely run through till the end of June. So some of the uh, things we've been doing, for example, we mentioned a number of interviews with uh, we gave all municipal councillors an opportunity and the mayor to participate, and many were good enough to, uh, to meet with us. The community survey was very successful. We got uh, 520 surveys back, which was great for a community of this size. Um, we surveyed uh, library staff and uh, uh, got 40 plus surveys, which is quite interesting since there's only something like 36 staff, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think a couple got timed out. <laughs> <laughs> They're very passionate. We've looked at some of the statistics where we review other community library systems that have populations between 50 and 100,000 and uh, compared yourselves on a number of uh, dimensions there. You can see also a list of the various locations that uh, we're holding the public meetings and uh, we'll be engaged at least in one planning workshop with the uh, steering committee to run through some of our findings. This is just a graphic that uh, outlines um, in some respects how libraries are experiencing change and on a number of different dimensions. So you can see here on the upper left that uh, as with all communities, there's uh, demographic and cultural change that are influencing everyone. Uh, obviously, the rise of digital technologies uh, changing very rapidly. You have a number of digital services that you're offering the public, and I think uh, the community is getting used to some of those services. You have increasing competition from <clears throat> various other service providers in terms of how people spend their time to things like uh, Netflix, Amazon, Disney's now going to start streaming, various others. So the libraries are uh, traditionally, of course, um, have uh, offered print materials, but are increasingly looking at some of these other uh, digital offerings and so forth, as well as engaging and constructing a number of different programs and services that are appealing to not only traditional audiences, but newcomers and, and trying to uh, satisfy the many different uh, community groups that it has to cater to. So in the end, uh, they still have to be accountable to the public, the community, and all of the funders. So it's a bit of a balancing act that libraries are being confronted with. Some of the, uh, we do what's called a SWOT analysis. Some of these findings came out of the community survey. Uh, very uh, strongly, um, Folks uh, very much appreciate the staff that they interact with, and that's interesting for us, particularly in smaller communities where it's very much a personal relationship that people have with the staff, and the staff knows everybody by name, they seem to know what people like reading, and uh, make an effort to uh, uh, get to know people in the, at, at the local level, which is very much different than a, a large library system like Toronto. Uh, you have a, a perception of a good collection, uh, good access also to digital resources. Our sense is that the community is still learning how to work with the, the digital resources that are available. A uh, great network of facilities, as we saw there in the, in the map earlier on. And as 
we mentioned, you do quite well with limited funds. Uh, relative to other communities in a comparable size, uh, your budget is on the low side. So I think there's an argument there over time for the municipality to increase the level of funding of the library system to bring it up on par with other library systems that are in the same sort of 50 to 100,000 population band. Uh, weaknesses, um, <clears throat> lots of uh, facilities could use a refresh and maybe in need of, of uh, some updating, uh, perhaps some more so than others. Um, in many cases, there's a lack of space, I guess, to run programming and do some of the things that the librarians would like to do. Uh, some of the computers and equipment could be in need of an upgrade. Um, there's always things that libraries are experimenting with, like getting iPads and Chromebooks and you know, this sort of thing, um, and trying to stay on top of that and, and could keep investing in your equipment is uh, important for libraries to do. Uh, optimizing the hours of operation. I guess if you run a community survey, people are always going to talk about the hours of operation. They're not, and as, as we mentioned, it's always a challenge to try to uh, to uh, structure those so that they kind of maximize the benefit for people that are living in the communities. I know when we went out uh, in a lot of these smaller communities, sometimes they say, well, people don't, the library board wants us to be open in the evening, uh, and yet traffic might be light in the early hours of the evening. But on the other hand, it is a way to try to reach out to groups that need the library in evening hours and can't come out during the daytime. So there's a reason for trying to do that. Uh, so opportunities, clearly revitalizing the facilities is an opportunity. Uh, better computers and equipment, if we can afford to do that. Distribution of hours, you can see these reflect some of the uh, weaknesses that were pointed on in the previous slide. I think there are more opportunities for various partnerships, however you can manage that with uh, groups like schools and, and seniors homes. Um, possibly a mobile service, uh, we looked at that in, in some other library systems. Uh, it's a way to reach out to maybe areas that don't have access to one of the 14 branches. On the other hand, they can be an expense and, uh, and uh, have their own sets of challenges in order to be able to run something like that. Uh, possibly outreach to various non-users. Um, you tend to be a little on the low side in terms of card holders as a percentage of the overall population. So if there's ways we can bring more people into the library, give them cards and this sort of thing, that would be great. Uh, some of the threats, just an aging population, we saw that in the community surveys. There's uh, um, whether you consider that a threat or not, but it's nice to have younger families coming in to be able to use the library system. And we can see that in some of the branches where you're getting kind of a group of older users on, on the one end and then some younger families that are coming in. And they have different types of needs, so challenge to service everybody there. Uh, we mentioned some drifting away from the library and uh, adopting other forms of entertainment. Um, looking at uh, um, ways of accessing um, things like Netflix and so on, or they're, they're finding, we found some on the survey said that they were able to get a lot of their needs met without coming into the library. Um, we mentioned again, a very high satisfaction with a number of things like staff, the materials, information dust was mentioned until us. Thursday, interlibrary loans people would be satisfied with. Uh, as Jamie was explaining, uh, uh, OLS is now shutting down its, old, uh, its uh, interlibrary loan service, so that'll be quite a challenge to see how the dust settles with that. Um, some dissatisfaction with uh, people felt that they're, notwithstanding the fact that you have 14 branches in the system, that they felt a lot of people don't know about the library, which is interesting considering there's so many branches around. Uh, and people say this in a lot of the studies we work on, but they always like to see more programs for adults, particularly teens. Teens are always a challenge. Uh, in, some, in some cases, children. In some cases, people wanted more programming for older adults. Parking was mentioned. Hours of operation, the amount of space in the library, availability of quiet work areas. 
uh, availability of some program and meeting spaces. Um, and of course, people wanted more programs for seniors' activities. Um, this was just a, a graphic, uh, one of the results from the uh, community <coughs> survey. Um, you can see here that the majority are driving themselves to the library over 80%, but we do have a contingent here that's about 23% or so who are walking to the library. And so that's important when you have all these branches that are, um, people need to get to um, in, in very much smaller amounts of uh, other forms of transportation to get to the library. Uh, how long does it take to get to your regular branch? Uh, let's say about two-thirds here are going to be within 10 minutes, let's say. Another quarter or so within a 15-minute drive. And yet there's a few out here on the margins who are saying 30 minutes to an hour or over an hour. So they may be in some of the more remote parts of the community. Um, so uh, that's interesting, just that for some it's still a long way to come. Uh, when we looked at the uh, Quirtha Lakes library system relative to other communities in the 50 to 100,000 band, uh, you've got a, a large number of service points per 10,000 population. That's just another word for branches, including the main library. So naturally, you're going to be quite a bit higher than the others. We mentioned card holders uh, as a percentage of the population is low. It's 24% compared to 34% elsewhere, so we mentioned again you have a large number of non-users. Local funding per capita, we mentioned is uh, only $23 compared to $44 for other communities, so uh, we could almost double that to, to catch up. Um, service hours for uh, every 10,000 population, uh, you're at 43, which is very good, so that means you're using your funds well to keep the libraries open. And the way you do that is by saving money on other things. So branches are perhaps thinly staffed, and, and, but efficiently staffed in that respect. Program attendance, uh, a little bit lower, uh, 0.21 per capita compared to 0.3. Um, and uh, in some respects, the challenge is when you've got small branches, how do you get enough interest in programs where maybe there's only three or four people who can come out and do certain things? So. It's easier in a large system where you have more density of population to get programs running. And titles held per capita, you're actually doing very well at six and a half compared to 3.9 for the, the benchmark communities. So uh, this is just some of the things that we look at in a strategic plan. The uh, part you can't read here says vision and mission. Uh, and then potentially we have a number of recommendations that deal with programs, technology, staffing, marketing, and so on. The balance will shift depending on the needs of each of the communities. And uh, then once that's done, we can look at priorities and try to create essentially a financial plan and an implementation plan. So we would split those up into, these are the sort of short-term objectives we'd like to achieve, medium term, <coughs> and uh, what might take place actually after the four-year period. So that was a fast run through of uh, the presentation and what we're doing. Or would I'd open it up to questions at this point or comments um, on what we're doing? It's just not that, but I think you probably have heard that uh, high school students now have to take four courses online. Yes. So that's going to put a little more pressure on because there's a lot of children that don't have computers exactly. and don't have the system at home, the internet connect. Yeah. So uh, I guess you got to be a little prepared for that. Mm -hmm. That's Thank a good point. Uh, yeah. yeah. Thankfully, last year, Omini was the last branch to actually get Wi-Fi in, so all 14 of our branches now do have have Wi-Fi, so that's one thing we are anticipating is yeah. more students coming in with 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 uh, either, you know, laptops or, or what have you to, <coughs> to do the work in the school because that's when you yeah. get the internet or fast enough internet connection to. to so, make a lot too won't have computers; mm -hmm. like they just can't afford it. Well, there's some the the school system. My understanding is starting in grade nine is supposed to supply all of the students with. Um, computer with a, a, a netbook or a, a, a oh, is that really yes. so, oh, is so uh, that um, I didn't know. but still they may supply them with a tool but the schools 
close their doors at a certain time so the library would be open and available with their Wi-Fi for them to come and use the facility. It's just the challenge is yeah. if you had 20 students that needed to come <laughs> to use a, their tool that the, the school has given to them, where can we accommodate them to sit yeah. and do that, which is a challenge. Yeah, and uh, we see a lot of people actually using libraries sometimes in a parking lot on the weekend, you know, where they're using the Wi-Fi and not actually coming in to use the library system, but uh, now that doesn't apply to the point you were raising about computers in the schools where people are actually going to need access to the computers, but mm -hmm. Jimmy and our team were talking about this where uh, maybe an opportunity for the library to invest a bit more in computers in branches that are near the secondary schools, for example, mm -hmm. just so that kids have access to this sort of thing. Okay. Does, does the Gates Foundation still give money for computers? Yeah. Not anymore. No, oh, that's uh, that, Yeah, that program. I think it was, I think it was a ten-year program, and then yeah. about three or four years ago. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I think the schools are making a, a good effort to try and invest in computers as much as possible. But I don't know to to what extent that covers all of the different grade ranges and the mm -hmm. like. But. Uh, uh, we did have a chat with the director of uh, Training Lakeland School Board, and uh, um, that was interesting. And uh, one of the ideas we put forward was um, perhaps jumping ahead a bit, but maybe give kids library cards at a young age and just introduce them to the, the system, which uh, he thought was a great idea. Mm -hmm. Although, when asked, he said most of the schools now have access to Wi Fi and pretty good computer resources and so on. So. Uh, they're certainly aware of the, the requirement. Uh, so this was a question we were proposing just to generate some initial discussion, which uh, I'll just throw it open to everybody if you'd like, is uh, how important to you is the role of the library in the community, and uh, whether anybody would like to describe some of the benefits that uh, libraries provide.
you know, when we need technology help or yeah. something. Can you describe how the participants in the market kind of engage with the library? Like, is there a, a lot of uh, kind of discussion and involvement? Uh, I, I would think the customer, or say patrons yeah. of the library that come in are very good to be patrons of the farmer's market. There's a connection. Yeah, yeah. 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 If you yeah. come to a library, you'll probably like, like the farmer as well. Yeah. Yeah. So it just plays off each other. And what we do at the market, we have a table okay. where, yeah. is where, the far, where the library, if they want to do something, yeah. Yeah. it's available to this It's called a nonprofit table and it's oh, free yeah. okay. and yeah. everything. Yeah. There's so much scheduled for a weekend in June because of that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, so but if you're good. feeling that the pay, there's that symbiosis between the patrons and the library, I wonder how many people that come to the market don't come to the library and how can we, how can that feed each other? Because you're saying how important is the role of the library to the community? You know that it's, it, it's valuable to you, but I'm wondering how many people out there in the community don't recognize the value that could be in the same way that you've recognized that value. Well, what could happen is, Lindsay, you're coming to the uh, market, yeah, right? June 10th or something around there, yeah. Yeah. Lindsay's going to come to the market, and she can promote the library, sure. which is great. And if yeah. she needed a second date, maybe we can do something like that. Maybe send two community tables. Yeah. But the community table has been absolutely sensational and successful. Is there a competition for the community table from other groups? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Very popular. I find sometimes it's hard to get community space in farmers markets. Yeah. 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 Well, we go out of our way. We have 21 dates this year, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. people are phoning us in February to book because mm -hmm. they they don't want to miss. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Other. Thoughts, comments on the uh, importance of the role of the library in the community? I find the role in this area, anyway, is it's a, it's almost a meeting place for yes. people. Okay. Yeah. Not only this room <clears throat> yeah. with the art shows that we have mm -hmm. every month, but anyone who comes in, everybody knows everybody sort of thing. Yeah. And even though there are smaller, privately owned little libraries in town, like 432, <coughs> Victoria Place, I don't know what else. But, yeah. um, so probably we miss a lot of those people um, because they have their own facility and they don't bother coming in here. But those that do, I mean, this is a very important place. That slide we got up with the, you know, yeah, the library is trying to contend with demographic yeah, change yeah. and all these things like they're when they're <coughs> responding, you, you hear this a lot in, in kind of library fields, is just uh, the, the idea of a community hub, which is maybe an overused phrase, but it's uh, it's true <coughs> and perhaps it's becoming more so or can be a great way just for people to engage with each other, find out information about the farmer's market. What's going on? Maybe a bit of tourism information. Uh, how, do I, who do I talk to? Uh, do I know with my taxes? Yep. 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 But the challenge for us, like, yeah, they do have little libraries at Victoria Place and, at the, and Port 32. But those are for books. Yeah. And there's so much more, I think, that people have. Some, that's our challenge, is to yes. people know there's more in this library and books on the shelf, which are very important, yeah. but all those other things that our librarians can ex can expose people to that you're not going to get at mm -hmm. a little collection of books in in these other places. Nice. There's more they can get here, and yeah. that's the challenge I think we have is to <clears throat> make people know that it is more than just oh I can get my books I want to read there. Yeah, and some of the branches have these service centers in them, which you can do a few little other things, which is uh, helpful, uh, uh, but maybe there's an opportunity to do more of that, I don't know, that's uh, coming out of the strategy, and, uh, yeah. From your knowledge, that sort of came in, you talked to this too, you mentioned that uh, you see people in the parking lot after hours <laughs> using the, uh, the Wi-Fi. Yeah. Is the Wi-Fi on at all branches, at all times, 24 hours a day? 
Yes. To the extent that the internet is available or <laughs> the, 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 the same. Some depending, yeah, kind of depending on where the uh, um, access point is, it can, it can extend quite quite far out um, in some branches. Or if it's if it's just a smaller branch, then it's um, you know, it, it, the, the, the halo of service can extend. Far is it? Were you with us when Andrew was bringing that as an issue? Because in Woodville, there were there were some people that were unhappy because. People were seen lurking outside the library. And they were, they were the and we talked about, can we just get a bench there for them? Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. One of the interesting things, because um, I can see what people are accessing the times of the Wi Fi, um, Oakwood has a peak at about 7 o'clock in the morning and about 8 o'clock at night. And I think it's people commuting either to and from the GTA, stopping in, checking their email, whatever, you know, I'm on my way in there, I'll put up in there in 30 minutes, yeah. and then, because they're disconnecting for a few minutes, yeah. but there is these little peaks yeah. when, you know, the library's, the library's not open, yeah. but it's, it's still a resource, yeah. even, even when the building and the lights are off, the, the Wi-Fi is there. Certainly, they sit along the stone wall on TS tracks. Okay. <laughs> they're using their using their device. Working. Working. I've seen people on trucks, you know, along the wall there, you know, yeah. doing it. Doing the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. So it's. I suppose some boats may be able to do that too. I don't know if it goes that far, does it? No, I don't think it's going to too much across the road. Yeah, 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 get off the, the boat and come yeah. in here. Yeah. 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 Judy said it was like, yeah. and then it goes um, cable cable. It's not necessarily. Yeah, yeah that's true. Cable yeah. cable. I went, I was testing it today up in front. Yeah. 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 That's what I'm really up to. Is, maybe you mentioned it. Do we want people outside? I think it's a great idea, personally. Um, and if, 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 if you do think it's a good idea, could you extend the Wi-Fi further so people, more people take access to it and promote that as, as a service? Mm. There's uh, like the washrooms, promote washrooms. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good stone. People can't wait to get in our driveway. Well, as we get older, we need them more often. <laughs> Actually, I wonder if you could use that parking lot space uh, against the like a roof of standards and whatnot. So it's <laughs> space that's being used by library patrons. A couple of the library systems uh, actually lend out portable Wi-Fi devices. So, for example, Toronto uh, Public Library has a system where you can take this device home with you, and they have actually tried to target people that are considered to have. Uh, special needs and how are they define that? So it, it's kind of got a social dimension to it, mm. and uh, I believe they got funding to purchase their devices from a sponsor. Um, and then I think Kitchener also owns out uh, Wi-Fi devices, but they they don't have this sort of social dimension to it. So you can just take that. And I, I I'm not sure what the lending period is. It may be. Uh, Lengthy in the case of Toronto, but I think you've got to bring it back in the case of Kitchener, like a, a book you're circulating. So it's kind of an unusual design. Uh, Would so that be costly though? Because to purchase them, yes. Uh, but even to, you know, do Wi Fi at somebody's home. Yeah. So there's that cost of, of the capital cost and then the Plus operating the, uh, the operating yeah. cost, yes. Mm -hmm. um, so I think. Um, in some cases, municipalities have sort of agreements with service providers, and they're sort of tapping into more of a, a wholesale rate oh, to okay. get these, these signals, as opposed to just having to pay your, yeah. you know, Rogers bill for a hundred dollars a month or whatever, and then skipping into a library. But, uh, I just had one of those to take to the cottage, and it was pretty expensive. Yeah. <laughs> well, and speaking of which, when we were in the north, I think in Dunsford, the, the just the inner. We got no reception on our phones or anything, and then we kind of click in and out. So some areas of the community, the uh, reception is just fine. So I mean, that's there's not much we can do about that. Yeah. At least the, I don't think in the short term. Unless, but, yeah. At the risk of belaboring this issue, excuse me, but I'm interested in it. Uh, I don't have data on my phone, 
Uh, not because I'm cheap. But it's true that I am. So whenever we go traveling, I just stand outside a bank or a restaurant and, and use it. Mm -hmm. And um, for me, that's very advantageous. I, I, I don't have to pay for a, for a phone. Um, mm -hmm. Is it is it something that, that we want to get involved in on expanding this Wi-Fi outside of the physical building and promote it to the point where people come specifically to use it and therefore expose them to a library mm -hmm. building at least mm -hmm. to invite them psychologically to come on in next time they're around? Or am I? Well, I guess. Um, How do you find this? In, in, I think Wi Fi is promoted on the website as being a feature of the library, and uh, like kids would know these things generally. Yeah. When I say kids, I mean covering uh, everybody <laughs> up to ourselves. But uh, millennials, these sort of things, they probably know where to go and get Wi Fi. And, you know, Tim Hortons and a lot of these restaurants and so on offering it as well now. But it, it clearly is a service that's being used. Uh, maybe there's a way of um, promoting it a bit more or uh, helping people understand it. We, I, I mean, I think we have some that are still pretty much in the dark ages with, with respect to all of these, these technologies that uh, don't have an appreciation of, uh, of what's, that, what's available to them. And, um, we, on the survey, I uh, forget the exact percentage, but it was maybe 15% or so that, that uh, said they don't, do not have access to the internet at home. Not a little higher than some of the other communities that we've looked at, so uh, it may respect, reflect just the fact of being in a rural area. And uh, that's a good point. Um, if there's ways we can think of uh, somehow capitalizing on the fact that the libraries have access and, to And that's library. only 15% of the 25% of the population that hold a card. So that yeah. number could be exponentially huger because people that because don't have cards aren't even aware of what that's. Off the grid entirely sort of thing. That, uh, I think promoting the cards, that's a great idea. Uh, yeah, that's a great idea. Just a thought on the, the internet access thing over time though. It may be that if you've got kind of a unique uh, advantage uh, now, that over time that may become less so as more and more businesses establish internet connections. So your unique role may be digital literacy in terms of educating people how to use it, not just giving them access, but actually kind of yeah. optimize the use. Yeah. Right. Just as I was driving home, I was listening to Lowell's speech, and I was classical music station, and um, there was an add-on for an app that you could get by whatever you do with these things, I have no idea, um, and download books. Yeah. And your first book is free, and then after that, you pay for whatever you're going to download onto your device, whatever your device is. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there is a huge group of people you can do that for free through the library. library you can do that for the library through the library. People maybe don't know that. Well, yeah. Yeah. that so communication. Is being advertised already. Digital literacy. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe another idea too. There's lots of community groups that meet. Yeah. And maybe somehow you promote come to the library, we have a meeting room. Mm. So you get people coming, <coughs> groups, yeah, yeah. Because there's a lot of groups. As you know, Macy, this room is pretty busy. Yeah, mm. well that's good, yeah. yeah. But as a future, because this is future planning, this is, we're here to talk yeah. about strategic planning, and that could definitely be a good strategic direction mm -hmm. to go. Because this, we're not talking about just this library building. We're talking about all of our library buildings, and we know that mm -hmm. that's something that's maybe more readily available in the Omini branch because it's new. It's a little bigger. <coughs> Benlin may be becoming bigger, bigger. <laughs> um, and have more space. So it's not just we're not just talking about this library. We're talking about strategic direction for our whole system. And that's a great idea, is to say, maybe that's a direction we need to be promoting. I don't know how well the meeting room is utilized in Lindsay. Quite well. Uh, <laughs> one of our difficulties is actually 
getting to use it for ourselves. Sometimes <laughs> <laughs> and you get a lot of yeah. community groups, and they'll have their you know their monthly or their bi-monthly meetings. So they'll set the whole year up, and you know. We'll, sometimes, especially if it's a Saturday, we'll be scrambling sometimes to try and find a, uh, a Saturday that's available for, for a program period. Because I could envision a group, whatever, saying, okay, I want to use that space for our meeting, and our librarians, talented people that they are, could say, oh, they're coming in for that meeting for that topic. We can set up a table display of books relating to that topic or material relating to that topic so they know they can come in here. Let's say it's the farmer's market, for example, they're going to set a table up with sort of all kinds of cooking recipes and back to earth and, and, and showing what's available in the library on that topic that they're meeting about. So that's certainly a way of, of bringing them in for their meeting, as you suggest, but giving them a sense of, hey, this is what you can get when you're here. And you don't have to have a library card to come to a meeting. Mm -hmm. But you might want to have one by the time you leave. There you go. See, you can remove the curtain. Yeah. Jamie, I don't know if you got that done, but um, Barb really made that point about communications on mm -hmm. ebooks. Mm -hmm. I think that's a really important thing. Yeah. Yeah, because just, why go to Amazon when you can go to the library for free? Yeah. It's so important. So, by a show of hands, and we're all library users, but how many have access to? Uh, digital books or using the digital books through your library card. One, two, I choose three. not to. I, I like books. <laughs> yeah, what about but, but, and yeah. magazines? Have you tried those? Yes. Yeah. Digitally? Yeah. yeah. And music? No, I haven't done that. Every Which... week I get my, my <laughs> reminder. <laughs> you can download your three songs and every week I go, I, I don't do it, can you but I download them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've got a pamphlet for you. I'll show you. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> You're like three a week. Three songs a week. But then the, you could download them and on they're your device. Forever. Mm -hmm. forever. 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 Yeah. See, I know that. So three, time, three songs times 52 weeks a year, there's a lot of music. Wow. Well, and I think, yeah, it's a communications issue. How large is the library? Do we know? Do we know? Mm -hmm. How large is the music library? Go on board and find out. Ask <laughs> <laughs> uh, your librarian to show you how to go on board. I can't yeah. remember on, on Freedom how many songs it is. It's like a million or something. I don't think it says. Wow. Yeah, it's always expanding. It's, 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 really it's owned by Sony Music, so it's pretty much it's their entire catalog. Um, the difficulty that we find is even people who are an avid user of one type of resource often won't know that we have a similar resource online. We have, you know, I've often seen the staff mention to somebody who's taking out a stack of, of audiobooks on CDs. It was, if you checked out Overdrive, you can just download them. Didn't have a clue. They knew they had the, they, we had the e-books, but they didn't know we had the audiobooks that they could download. Movies? Uh, there's another one. Can you download the no. Anybody? Anybody down movies or the library? See, a lot of people just don't know that. Yes, so that is communication yeah. is, is so important to, to let people know. This and just think if you folks don't know, what's yeah. the way out there in the yeah. street? Yeah. 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 And we have library cards. That was, yeah. that, that was the 75% that don't. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. what's the cost I didn't know it was free. I knew you could free. download free. stuff. Free. 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 What's the cost free. to us? Cost of the library. Yeah, there is, and that I can't see off the top of my head what the, what the costs are. Yeah. Oh, yes. A quick question. Uh, in uh, all your data collection, have you identified uh, the demographic that you're dealing with and the down the road demographic that's going to be in these rural areas? <laughs> uh, we actually have quite a lot of information on um, demographics uh, by age and uh, hustle size, hustle characteristics, and so on. It's a good question, thank you. Um, we could go back for a fairly extensive <laughs> presentation just on the, uh, the survey results, but uh, we did get a lot of good information on that. And incidentally, the, the library does cover a lot of demographics, like regardless of age yeah. and so on. It, it, so we see good response from uh, people in their teens all the way up through into their 80s in some 
cases with, with pretty good representation in each of those age groups um, throughout. Um, we got good representation geographically from within Cartha Lakes. We got a few that are living outside. We got some uh, seasonal residents. Um, so it's good that way. And as far as the uh, future population, I guess we're looking at it won't change a whole lot in the next four years. And I think even beyond that, well, it will change probably in the next 10 years or so. You'll be getting more population in certain areas. So we have to be conscious of that as well. Uh, the concern is the, the aging of the, the population. We've got quite a fairly large number of library users that are 60, 70, 80 years old, and so it would be nice to get younger families to come in and, and keep sort of uh, appealing to those groups. So, uh, so yes, um, we did get a fair bit on that. The, the other quick thing is um, just as part of our initial research, we did a sort of demographic analysis of the population within, I think, it was a five kilometer radius. Each of, of each of the branches. So that's some interesting information about just the kind of immediate local population of each branch. We certainly yeah, we haven't shared that, but we do have, uh, we produce, uh, was it Polaris? Polaris, yeah. Uh, data profiles of each of the market areas within the five kilometer radius of each of the 14 branches, which spews mm -hmm. out quite a lot of information. That's good stuff in there as well. Because from a business perspective, I mean, what you'd be doing is, you know, catering to your actual user base right now, because you want to maintain that base and then do outreach into different areas. Absolutely. And yeah. uh, so, you know, the demographic of the area is really important to know who, who your user base is. Yeah. And I'd be interested to see that data, actually, that uh, from the library here, as to just exactly who is coming in and, and using the mm -hmm. services and yeah. uh, work towards that kind of an end. Mm -hmm. It's good too, and so libraries have to be thinking both of their current user base as well as marketing to, you know, providing services to existing users as well as what can we do to appeal to younger groups and whether that's changing the, the kind of mix of programs, collections, services and so on, or whether it's just getting the word out and getting people in and familiar with what's going on. I think that's all part of it. And here this interesting discussion about all these resources and, you know, familiar with sort of traditionally what libraries are doing, but there's a lot going on that maybe you want to just dip your fingers into a little bit and try downloading some music or a book online and uh, through your library card. It's, it's kind of cool, actually. And you don't get fined. <laughs> it just disappears off the grid. But, but Steve's time, then... question is good because that's what a strategic plan is all about. We're, yes, trying, to, we're trying to develop a strategy yeah. to deal with now and in the future, and if they've got the demographics that can help us with that plan, that can make this much more valuable. Yes, good point. Well, I, I can speak to my democratic uh, yeah. uh, demographic. Sorry, I'm 65. Yeah. I am completely internet driven. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't, I don't go onto te television. Is a non-existent in my life. Okay, you're uh, streaming I don't, everything. I don't come into the library. Uh, yeah. YouTube is a big source of entertainment and information. Yeah. Every news channel you can think of in the world has a YouTube channel now. Yeah. So I'm suspecting that from 65 down, you are really going to be struggling, because why should I leave my office? You know, when they get everything there, there's, I mean, I would, I would come here for other things other than that. It would be a more of a social kind of situation. Yeah. But um, as far as you know, needing stuff, uh, really. So in terms of access to information, you've got it covered. But for programs and activities that may have a social dimension to them, you might come to the library for participation. That's what I'd be looking at. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So it's uh, just a good point that uh, there. You know, on the one hand, we have traditional kind of users that are familiar with print materials, books, and uh, all the stuff we grew up with. And then, on the other hand, there's people like yourselves, whose world is largely virtual and digital, and you get everything a lot, uh, excluding the social experience, I guess, through your experience, uh, through the computer. Well, it happens on my schedule. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's the big difference with, between online. Yeah. You know, it, whatever my schedule happens to be, I can mold that to fit my life, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so when you have me talk about library hours, you know, now, now you're into a sort of static, I've got to be here in a certain time. Yeah. Well, maybe I've got other things going on, maybe I'm working and so on and so forth. So, um, you know, there's, there's a convenience factor, sure. huge convenience factor, especially when it's like, you know, three feet of snow on the ground, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so have you got a library card? I do, I do, yes. And are you using Overdrive and Nubla and some of these things that are uh, downloading your books? That, uh, uh, actually, no. Okay, uh, so there's more to discover. That, uh, 
Yeah. Uh, but it's all good. Because there, there are many ser services like that that we were talking about where you have to pay for them. Like the uh, advertisement for your online books. And it's all available for free. Yeah, may I just make a, make a point? Yes. Yeah. My wife was saying she'd explain it. We've tried to download the books. But she's one of those that wants to hold it in her hand sure. and turn the pages. Yeah. And uh, they shouldn't. And yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Lots of people like that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. We, we hear that a lot. People like books and the, the tactile experience. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just make sure you bring it back at the end of the three days. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's easier on your eyes, I find, that, that's true. that yeah. um, reading on a tablet all the time is yeah. not conducive. Mm -hmm. They're already saying there are medical problems with people who have been reading and, and too much Wi-Fi and everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And with books, you don't have that problem, really. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You might need stronger glasses. <laughs> <laughs> I was listening to uh, the CDC, I think, last week on about Thursday or something. They had an interview with the librarian of the North York branch. They, somebody had returned a book that they borrowed in 1987. <laughs> the little note, better late than never. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly. And a $3,000 bill? Well, they, they avoided the $3,000 bill. But, uh, and I think they calculated the expense would be something like that. But I guess there's a, a cap on library fines. <laughs> uh, $45 or something in the case of Toronto. But, uh, they wondered whether that was the most overdue book. That <laughs> well, I think somebody did bring back a book from the 1940s that they had found. Oh, but you know, yeah, going okay, through. Yeah. It's and probably not the first time something no, like that's that's happened. Right. They? Yeah, probably they have no record of it on the system. Yeah. Since it's that's all right. been digitized. So you're the hook. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, this is another question that we posed. Uh, what would you like to see in terms of improvements or new offerings from the library? Um, in terms of facilities, collections, computers, whatever. I'd like to see maybe a few more Lindsay's. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> to clarify, I do have old stuff. So. <laughs> I think that's really good where you can, you know, for computer use or phone use and that, you know, it, because there's a lot of stuff that she would know that I don't know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that makes quite a difference, I think. So I would like to see some, you know, more. How often do you come around here? For about that? once a month. We're trying to do about twice a month in Buck Cajun now. Oh, okay. So, just for the technology session, sure. one-on-one -on -one right. sessions. Yeah, yeah. It, but it, I find it very useful. Or more yeah. training to the existing staff so that they can yeah. make it be yeah. Lindsay Combs. Yeah. yeah, well, they're very good <laughs> staff wise, but <laughs> you know, they can't come and spend one on one with you because they're busy, busy doing other stuff. Yeah. yeah, but they're very good. They're, they're like, they are little Lindsay's. <laughs> <laughs> other ideas? It's, uh, or building on that idea? It's important that library staff are able to help yeah. clients and patrons with their technology. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and they're very good here. And I, and I think that's, you, 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 you kind of mentioned it a couple of times, and I think that's really what we struggle with is we have um, great staff who want help, but patrons don't want to I don't want to use the word bug them, but don't want to take up too much of their time because they're by themselves and they're, you know, they're, they've got you know, five kids have come in and they're, you know, they're, they're, they're trying to run the operation, run the branch. Um, so they don't, they don't even want to kind of approach people. Um, whereas um, you know, you know, Lindsay's available or any of the other staff that we can double up, it really helps. I mean, the more staff we can have on the floor to actually help people, the better. <laughs> Um, as it is right now, it's one person pretty much in every branch except for uh, Lindsay. Um, yeah. Exactly. We mustn't forget though that there's there's hundreds of volunteers out there who mm -hmm. have, have retired and have certain skills. How how are we engaging the people who are available to come in and do it to us? Yeah, like Steve could come in and yeah. show people how to use it. Yeah. <laughs> engaging obviously with these people. 
Or instead of doing just one on one, mm -hmm. three on one or four so, on yeah. one or little mini seminars that could mm -hmm. happen okay. that would would that Lindsay could come and do with a few people. Mm -hmm. right. Not too and, many. and that's and that's what Lindsay's been trying to do because we haven't had training for a long time. She's been kind of trying to do more one-on-one -on -one to see where the overlap of what people are looking for, and then now being able to go, hey, I'm getting a lot of questions on how do I get photos from my iPhone onto my iPad so I can now see them bigger, or how do I edit them, and things like that. So I mean, she's seeing the overlap, then she can develop a, a course or a class for three or four people at a time, and hopefully you know, hit all the topics that they need in doing it. So, well, I was thinking beyond that. As I, I recall, I'm going back about 20 years now, and I forget who it was, it might have been one of the banks, uh, the, um, what's that the bank that's not a bank? But anyway, they, they, they had a, a, an organization where they would retain retired people and send them out into the community. Because we used one for promotion when I was, uh, mm -hmm. I haven't had to do this. <laughs> and he spent, oh, it was a three hour, we had three hours with him, and he came and told us how we could do something better. But it couldn't be like marketing, or yeah. it could be, it could be hmm. any conceivable. Yes, so, or the Canadian Executive Services overseas, they used to do things like yeah. that. Or the, 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 the bank, the Canadian bank. I can't think of it. Yeah, they go. Finland, it, especially federal, yeah. the federal business federal development, business and development. they would go in and, and do. You need some help, you know, getting your business going, yeah. or, or they would do that. Yeah, they came yeah. to me. We, yeah. we did retain them. Is that still going? That yeah. Program? Can we yeah. look into that program? Yeah. I don't know if, it, if that's a good idea, you know, to. For, for Are people aware that they can make requests or suggestions of purchasing um, mm. materials to the library? To, are, you know, I don't know if people are aware that they could say, "Hey, I, you know, these are this is a whole series of something that I think the library could purchase and be available to use." I don't know if people are aware they can do that. Are they? I know on the website it says make a suggestion, but. I think it goes on. To what extent? I think there's a few people that do a, do a like with everything in the library. There's a few people that do everything a lot. There's a lot of power users on each okay. topic, or not a lot, but there's several power users. Um, I know there's a gentleman that uh, emails me periodically, <laughs> once every two months, of a suggested title that he read. Um, he likes to read uh, um, self-published authors. So you know, people who are kind of below the radar, they're not getting any yeah. the promotion. He'll he'll uh, you know send me off a, a suggestion. He uses the library, but he suggest he'll picked up something through Amazon and suggest if we can purchase it to be a, it was a good book. It was mm -hmm. you know, appealed to a, a wide variety of users. Things like that. I thought you were thinking about, for example, a, a sewing machine. Someone's coming out. I have six sewing machines. Can I donate donate them to the library? The library use. So I don't have to get out, so I'll use that as an example. The sun may come up with a bankrupt stock or something that the library may be used. Uh, a sewing bee. But they're very popular. They right? do sewing in Fenland yeah. Falls. Yeah. Actually, do them everywhere, yeah. but Fenland's yeah. where they're living right now. But, yeah. uh, and that's, that's a, an example of mm -hmm. uh, something. That's a good idea. And also, I remember years ago I heard um, a library, I think it was in the States, that um, had uh, implement garden implements. So you can come and take out a hole or a rake or whatever <laughs> to do your own little garden. I always thought that was kind of clever. Kind of like a tool library yeah. for the garden and kind of focus That's right. Yeah. It kind of goes with the, the uh, farmer's market, yeah. that whole yeah, exactly. um, community garden uh, movement that's yeah. happening. So, But that goes right back to facilities because if you're going to have that, yeah. on, it's enough to have shelf booking Shelves for the books. No, no, no. But if you have the, you have a, a challenge of having enough shelves for the books we've got, your facility has to be able to accommodate shelves for farm mm -hmm. implements or sewing machines or yeah. so the facility piece. You're um, running, running out chainsaws to people. <laughs> 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 I think you've got to be a little careful with that. <laughs> if the word gets around, yeah. that you can go to a library and get a hold. 
You're bad. You're just, he's just a really bad person. <laughs> you couldn't help yourself, I know. <laughs> Toronto has a music lending library. I think Angus has a kitchen appliances, small ones. Oh, really? And things like that. There are various tool libraries around, but they're usually not part of the public library system oh, for various reasons. But, yeah. uh, I just thought that was clever. Yeah. I know because uh, our previous um, uh, chair, he got seeds into libraries, especially this time yeah. of year. Yeah. Just, you know, I thought that was very good too. Give away? Yeah, give away, yeah, give away mm -hmm. seeds. I think Dunsford yeah. is doing some gardening. Are they? Yeah, they've got a little kind of an official um, seed lending. Seed lending. I think that's I really important. And what day are they coming to make the bee, bom the bee bombs? Here, there's two yeah, places that are going to be um, this, yeah. this coming Saturday. Okay. Yeah. There's one, I'm, and I'm helping in Bob Cajun on the Friday. The Friday? Okay. Yeah, so there's one on here on Friday, and then the other three are on Saturday. Mm -hmm. But see, that's a, that's, a, that's a programming staff thing that's happening at this library that could be popular yeah. in other branches. And it's, and, it's, and it's shared with other community groups. You know, like the farmer's the market, or the, this, this is B City. So, mm -hmm. yeah. One of the Park. things that's interesting about this system is you get little pockets of activity, like you, the examples you've just been given, like, giving, mm -hmm. like the sewing machines, and maybe the seed library up at Dunsford, and somebody else maybe running a nice computer training program over here. And one of the challenges I think when we talk to library staff is just how do you kind of share this information? Mm -hmm knowledge with each other or is there a way of kind of something's working well here could we try it over there and uh, because in some respects it seems very uh, uh, not quite fragmented not that's the word but it's very much happening at individual library branches and there's we're be nice more of just making sharing ideas or finding a way to do that whether it's getting together informally more often or because i think there's only opportunities to Get together is it once or twice a year? Yeah, yeah we do the two staff. the two staff training days, um, which is pretty formal uh, agenda I, that sort of thing. Yeah, I try to keep it a little less formal than it used to be. Um, I, I've kind of found one of the difficulties is we have people who they've got great ideas, but they themselves don't have the technical skills to teach it. Um, mm -hmm. Sarah, who's our, our librarian, and Bethany, she she knows there's a lot of active sewers down there who would love to sew, but she doesn't sew, and doesn't doesn't have a clue how to sew. So it's 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 getting that together. It's getting that together and finding somebody who can kind of lead the group. You know, we've got the facility, we've got the machines, we can do all that. It's just we have to we have to tap into that that knowledge base that's that's around that's. That, that it's everywhere, it's just finding those, mm -hmm. those people with that knowledge. It sounded like Bill and Omidi was good at, good at <laughs> identifying people and yeah. you know, the story yeah. a little uh, you know, woodworking section yeah. with people or the book club in the back. And you're all doing aspects of it, I guess, in the back. But, uh, uh, are all the libraries not connected together by an association? I mean, when you become a, a librarian, it's, it's a university degree. I mean, like, it's a really serious. You, you can actually run the whole library situation if you have a degree as a librarian, actually, because when you look at some of the libraries in Toronto, I mean, it's two or three times the size of the entire city quarter lakes run by, you know, maybe three or four people. Uh, but is this not a way that they can keep in contact with because you share books and everything else? Do they not share information through this uh, library association? Librarians love associations. <laughs> there are many of them, particularly in Ontario. But, uh, yeah. and, it, and it's a great exchange, but I think it's at the higher levels where uh, you know the people with the university degrees are able to attend these sorts of sessions. And I'm not sure how easy it is for somebody in Northern just to go off and attend a library. Well, I find the har actually the hardest part, in Lindsay's been a prime example of this, is there are great networks for library directors to talk about so bu yeah. budgets mm -hmm. and municipalities and things like that. There's not a lot of networks built in place for outreach librarians from Core of the Lakes to talk with the outreach librarian in Huntsville 
or, or in Aurelia or something like that, or you know, they, they, they have a few get-togethers a year, uh, I think you're going to one in, in next week, okay. Uh, <laughs> news soon. Um, but yeah, it's not, as, it's not as, for whatever reason, it hasn't been trickled down, so yeah. to speak, and become more formalized. I'm constantly, when I ever, because I'm, I'm the new library director, so I'm often introducing myself to people, and then I'm asking, well, do you have an outreach person? My outreach person would like to talk to you about some ideas and how you, you guys would be handling sewing classes or things like that. Yeah. Well, you know, Macy and I are on the farmer's market, and yet we just, we just email yeah. information to each other. I mean, is this not a possibility? Is there, I mean, these are university degree people. Can they not share information? Uh, go on the you know, Hotmail or something and Gmail, and there you go. The information shared between uh, two situations. You don't necessarily have to go. You know, can we not have uh, these online conferences, conference calls, and mm -hmm. this kind of stuff? We have yeah. Skype now. I mean, you, know, you talk about upgrading the technology in the libraries, and yet it seems to me that you're actually not utilizing the technology that we already have to communicate over vast distances, ideas, and, and new ways of doing it. We are. Our difficulty that we're facing is we still only have one person in the branch who has to run the branch as well as conduct the courses. So we're trying to find other people in the community to help us with that, whether it's volunteering. And, to teach a sewing class. So we, we've got the infrastructure, we know what we want to do, we just can't find people, people to actually help us teach these courses because we don't have the skill set. We don't have a person who's a sewer or in a, in a branch or the community they want someone to learn how to do woodworking. Well, our librarian there doesn't do woodworking, so it's trying to find somebody in the community who can teach that skill. That's our real difficulty that we're finding a lot of in the smaller community. On a smaller scale too, we're starting to sort of set up sharing devices. So we've got like a shared document where I just posted a lesson I recently did for a school group. So then other library staff within our system can go and say, oh, Lindsay did so-and-so gardening workshop. And they can really replicate that too. So it's nice that sort of the ones that don't require volunteers to do sort of a special skill such as woodworking, we are sort of developing ways of sharing some more of that information with other library staff that makes it a little easier to replicate and not quite so much work for the the single um, library staff branches. Oh, I certainly appreciate that uh, because uh, okay. you know, this is on a whole different level, but you seem to be indicating that you're actually having trouble networking information or finding out what one library is doing over here and sharing that information over there. And uh, you know, we, we have we have that technology that we can yeah. do that. I think yeah. they're doing that. Yeah, they are doing <laughs> it. Uh, you know, obviously communicating with each other and so on. But, um, um, just in speaking with some of the librarians, that there's, uh, it's all digital, which is not quite the same as uh, maybe somebody's got a great idea and they want to see if they could roll it out from some other place, or as Jamie mentioned, maybe it's a great idea, but you don't have anybody who can really uh, teach it or deliver the, the course. Um, I, I, it's just a bit of an observation. It's, it's different when you've got a system with three branches as opposed to 14. You know, it's just easier with a smaller system for folks to get together, and there's going to be large numbers of librarians all in the same branch, so somebody can cover the desk and do circulation when somebody else is running a kids program, or is here, you have the same person that's trying to do everything. So it's uh, just stretched in some respects. Or they have to get up and check out a book in the middle of one of the kids' story times or something. But, uh, so they're, they're just uh, the problems are a wee bit different. But but it's a good point. Uh, some library systems also have you know sort of intranets to cover off in-house communications and uh, different sorts of ideas and things like that. Be nice to just to get those and make creative things happen as opposed to the usual kind of administration that goes on in, in organizations where there's constant kind of barrage. You know, if you've worked in large companies. Uh, you know, communications and memos and things, forms that have to be completed and, and so on. There's all the kind of stuff that library managers have to deal with, I guess, as directors. Um, other thoughts on collections, facilities, powers of operation, anything? Yeah. Other libraries have not, not they have coffee shops, yeah. Yeah. which is maybe yeah. not here, yeah. but yeah. it's... <laughs> Yeah, they do have coffee. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah and some of the branches, I think, are offering coffee and things like that. Too. You know, yeah, offering coffee might yeah. be, and it, it's coffee is not an expensive 
situation and uh, and it would be interesting. And all the social things like the, the chess club and the scrabble and mm -hmm. I think more of that in mm -hmm. other branches would be really good bringing people out. <laughs> So are you saying that some of that's occurring? But it, some of it is. Yeah. Like I believe in Lindsay. Yeah. It is, but it'd be nice that it you know, moved out to other other libraries. Mm -hmm. We actually have two coffee machines at the farmers market, so we could possibly loan one to the library here and they can make coffee. Oh yeah, they have. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, sir. Yeah. Well, this is a bigger more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, most. Pretty sure now almost all the branches have at least one of those little carry missionaries. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're nice and they're not great for the environment, but yeah. they're nice and clean yeah. and you can contain. You have to make a pot and then find no one wants to, you know, person's had a cup and it just sits there all day. This is just a question of whether there's any improvements in programs, which I guess we're just talking about for users or maybe any. Ideas about ways to bring in non users to um, craft beer and more community service. You know? uh, yeah, that'll do it. Yeah. If we had a facility that was large enough, and some of them are large enough, to, to do yeah. community presentations and to get people in the door yeah. that yeah. don't have to have a card just to get in the building, because some of the in some of the uh, the surveys it was. Some people that hadn't been in the building, and we it right. just get them in the building. Yeah. That just and then we have yeah. all the lists of services that they have no idea about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, those are good ideas. Yes. The Bob Cage and Fall Fair. Lindsay has a Fall Fair. It might be great to have a table there. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and have a list made up of all the things you can do in the library just to see and say, look what you can do. And look, we have a library card available for you. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to pay for it. No, that's right. One of the few things that's really free. You know? <laughs> yeah. Probably the best value you get from uh, well, the yeah. government. Uh, it's education, too. Yeah. 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 And people like food at the farmer's market, that yeah, gets people like right. doesn't it? But, uh, yeah. yeah, at the farmer's market, that community table does great, yeah. so mm -hmm. it's amazing. That'd be a great spot. To what programs work really well in the core of the system? I know you've got some veteran um, people working in textiles and things like that. I think something that uh, would work really well in this area. I think there are already programs, so you wouldn't really have to do too much. And it's a time bank where you can give it, donate your time, and you get paid by someone else for time in return. And you, because there's a lot of volunteer potential in this community, uh, that is your target group. And um, you know, if you have seniors who want raking, and maybe younger seniors who can do raking, uh, who want whatever, you know, like, yeah, so work out some kind of trading mechanism, but yeah. t t time banks are very generic. Yeah. You don't have to do a lot, like I say, I'm sure. They're, I know down in the States there's library programs where there are our banks uh, in a action already, yeah. so you have all the information how, how it works, yeah. but that might be a drawing card in this area because that's one thing people have a lot of in this area is mm -hmm. time mm -hmm. and know where to focus it, and yeah. you could make this a focal point for that. Were you thinking it would be organized by the library or by some other group? Well, you'd have it on the computer and uh, just as a sort of a, a reckoning thing. And, Are you willing to donate their time? And, uh, well, yeah, or, they have a particular expertise in X, Y, or Z? And it may be a way of bringing in skill services, people who want to donate their time in exchange. You know, sometimes goods are better in exchange than actually money. Yeah. You know, so uh, maybe dog walking in exchange for, sure. you know, fixing a window or painting a room or wh whatever it is. Yeah. And you can kind of work that out. And I think these programs have been sort of worked to cover every aspect of volunteerism mm -hmm. uh, that you can think of. Mm -hmm. But again, it might create something that was, yeah, I mean, in today's world, uh, you have to have utility. Yeah. Okay, and right now the library is using utility because books are fading and technology is everywhere. So you need to provide something, you know, for your target group. And every library will be different. Mm -hmm. You know, Toronto Library might not that might not work down there, but I think it's a good 
idea up here for uh, yeah. considering the time availability. Good point. Mm -hmm. What do the others think of that idea? Um, it's been tried. I know uh, actually a fellow that I was doing some uh, garbage pickup today, Frank Smith, um, he came up to help me. And he, that, um, we have a thing called, or we used to do it, it's called ceilings. So it was um, through the college and he actually got a small grant to try to get that going and it, it kind of fell off the rails, although it's a, it's a great idea. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it, he did try it here and really take off. But uh. well, one of the things we have now too is, is this aspect of technology where everyone has a smartphone, pretty much. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you can do your communication through that kind of thing. You need to, you know, there's uh, much easier ways to do these these things now. So, so some of these older ideas mm -hmm. might be, you know, worth retrying mm -hmm. because it, you know, communication sometimes is the is a stumbling block, right? Sure. Okay. This is a great session, you, you know, I think. And you get to know oh, people the like, hey, <laughs> yeah. It's going to take you for a beer after. <laughs> yeah. I think it's going to be really, because I'm going to attend a couple of others, I think it's going to be very interesting to see the kinds of um, conversation that come out of those three questions in Olimi and in Kinmount yeah, sure. and different areas of the city of Coeur Lakes, because mm -hmm. really we're here to ask from a direction for us all, yes. but where are they going to take it? That's going to be quite interesting to see the difference. I think so, yeah. Whether there's commonalities or totally new yeah. ideas. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. may, may I ask a question off, off topic, but I think you have some, sure. how our community compares to 50,000 people in other countries. U.S. or like one country, England. Do you have any sense on, on how we compare? Uh, I guess I, I'd be less familiar with uh, library systems in, in other countries. Although I did drop into the library in the U.S. when I was down there uh, during the uh, during January briefly, and uh, they had a lot of the same types of things they were offering that we see in Ontario library systems. They, they had a mail a book program that, I, that I'm less familiar with, although maybe we have to do that now that OLS has collapsed. Hmm. But um, and you had to, this was for people that are isolated or had accessibility restrictions, and you had to fill out a form to qualify to have the books mailed to you, I guess. And uh, that was one way, I guess, it, I don't know how extensively it was used, but uh, it was promoted. Um, through the system that I was looking at. That's a good point, because we have a lot of people aging at home and not necessarily having access mm -hmm. to getting out and, and, and not going online yeah. at, at a certain age. So some sort of service around... Um, Whether it's through mailing a book yeah. or maybe driving it to them through volunteers or someone else. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we actually, yeah. we talked to Uber on another project to see if they wanted to do an Uber Reads program, which mm -hmm. they actually got back to us and expressed some interest mm -hmm. in it, but, uh, but said they were still struggling with Uber Eats at the moment. But you can imagine maybe running around with books as opposed to uh, food or something like that. The other is you get, um, in, some, in some situations, uh, I know Toronto is taking a look at this, but pilot projects where they may be looking at things like sort of vending machine or 24 hour seven library systems. You get Niagara Falls is working with um, vending kind of machines. There's different ones you can buy. So you, they put them in things like uh, where the people are in arenas. So you might have, you, you need your library card, but you can take a book out and the, the vending machine knows which books you've taken because it's RFID coded. And uh, then bring it back again, that sort of thing. So they get a bit of a different audience than uh, a traditional library system. So the idea is to try to go where large numbers of people are, but they um, both experimenting with this and finding that they try to give them content that they can bring it back at the end of a hockey game or something like that. So maybe it's a magazine or pictures or graphic novels, things like that that can be looked at. Will all of these ideas be introduced in your summary when you present it at the end of your 
the contract. Yeah, if you like, sure. Um, <laughs> there's, there's a lot of uh, interesting, innovative things going on in the library world, and some of it's uh, mm. haven't really touched on it too much, but they require money, usually, or, or in some cases, sponsors. So for things like the uh, portable Wi-Fi's that we were talking about, uh, we mentioned the Toronto, I don't know whether, I think they got Google to give to mm -hmm. pay for these things or somebody like that. So they, they fronted the, um, the capital cost and mm -hmm. you mentioned the operating too. I'm not sure exactly how that was dealt with, but I guess they found a way. So in some situations, libraries are um, you know, looking at themselves more as a sort of social uh, agency as opposed to just satisfying your need for entertainment books or whatever you kind of look at things. So, uh, we talk about bringing a service to where there's lots of people, and I know yeah. there's only one of Z, unfortunately, <laughs> but, but the retirement homes and the, and the uh, long-term care facilities are yeah. places where yeah. there are lots of seniors yeah. in one place, and mm -hmm. That yeah. service can come mm -hmm. to them, and if the service is there, these people have family, and these families can see what is being done to yeah. the library yeah. for their their parent or their aunt or their uncle, and it's a good feel good kind of thing that yeah, may stimulate. Oh, if our library can do that for them, then maybe I should be looking into going to the library. But there's only one of her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean it could be with us with long term care facilities or. Uh, Seniors residents maybe just have deposit collections where you take a bunch of books out and you don't worry too much about what, and then you sort of cycle them back out again in a month later or something like that. So you're still sort of providing a traditional service relatively inexpensively, and uh, um, I guess there's less management of it as compared to being in a branch and checking out all those sorts of things. Uh, I mean, a lot of the retirement homes have. Libraries, yeah, and there are books sitting on the shelf. But yeah. that's that's not the piece. It's the piece yeah. of the person introducing some of these people to the different. So maybe services. you have a book club tied to it, and then yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, so you have um, uh, library book club lending situations where you can take in six of a particular novel that's popular or something. Yeah. Uh, get them in. Spend an hour or two with them, disappear, come back a week later or three weeks, whatever it is. Yeah. Just what um, Roger asked um, about uh, uh, other countries. Uh, can you, when you're doing your plan up, give um, ideas of what other uh, systems are doing in Ontario that are innovative? Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, I think. Yeah, and we want to be conscious of what we thought had a good chance of working yeah. there, or at least even if, if they're, they're interesting just to sort of open Just to know about minds a bit what's going on This is there. going on, it's an interesting pilot project, and it's trying to do X, and it gets special funding, and maybe it's something yeah. you never thought about before. Yes. Now that yeah. is sort of happening. We have district law. Well, maybe we don't anymore from this other Ontario yeah. Library Service. But twice a year, we would send a representative to a meeting for our district, and our district included Halliburton. It included um, Whitby, yeah. Ajax, etc. And we would sit around the table and talk about, well, this is what my library is doing. This is what my library is doing. Yeah. And it was interesting within that small group. Yeah. And the representative would come back to our meeting and say. Oh, look what they're doing there, or here's their report. So that was happening in that district. Yeah. Who knows what's going to happen to it now? But mm -hmm. so was being cut with the funding. Yeah. Right. Yeah, but that's a good example where you know you can never have too much communication, yeah. I guess, on some of these things, just to know what people are doing. Yeah. yeah. What about the possibility of, of doing a partnership with uh, Trillium Lakeland School Board? And what you do is you get the high school kids to make little libraries. Mm -hmm. And you get the public school kids to decorate them. And we always have a book sale here every year. And it might sound counter you know, or competition to the library itself, but you know, it's trying to engage young people at an early age. Yeah. And because you need that continual coming up behind the people who are leaving the system. Mm -hmm. And uh, that might be a sort of a cheap way, because they, they do shop. 
you know, these, these kids have got to learn to do some carpentry in high school, that kind of stuff. And, and it's also a way to bring up the subject of what we're doing here and uh, find volunteers who will stick it on their property around the villages of City of Quarter Lakes. And uh, that might be a way to give extra access to books for the public and engage the younger kids in the whole system. Yeah. Uh, I, I'd like to see maybe stronger connections between the library system and the schools. The school, Troy and the Lakelands, uh, to some degree, uh, I think each of the schools has a branch library. I think what they have somewhat different levels of staffing, depending on whether it's our skill levels, depending on whether it's secondary or elementary, but they're trying to, I guess, use their libraries to varying degrees, and you see sometimes teachers taking kids into the libraries in the schools, but it'd be nice if there was Good crossover, you know, with more school kids coming in to use the library here and then setting up special programs like you're suggesting, or who knows what could kind of potentially uh, come out of a um, catalytic relationship like that. But uh, it'd be good to see. Well, right now there's there's no connection between kids and the library and the ones they see in the school really, and I, I don't know about anyone else, but I've always thought it's kind of a, a neat community thing when I walk down the street and see like, like a little library that someone's cared enough to to put something up and uh, the trust you know factor that you know, no one's going to destroy it and steal all the books and yeah. trash the thing. And I I think it's a really kind of positive community building. Right. I was actually in Detroit last week and I saw a it was in a dog park and it was a dog. Toy. <laughs> <laughs> so you thought your dog didn't like this, or you didn't like the sweetie toy, you put it in there and someone else would take it home. And you know, had information about uh, getting your animals spayed and neutered as Reuse. well. Reuse. Yeah. Yeah. Put your clothes on and you take them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was in Maine uh, a couple years ago and the library was a, was a Carnegie building because it was like that yeah. building. Mm -hmm. And it was here and across the road down by the water was that library's little library. They had they had made one and it was an yeah, actual yeah. mirror image of the big building. Yeah. Uh, but it was oh, a little small, cool. but it was yeah. a little library from that <laughs> library. It was kind of cool. Uh, neat. Yeah. I have a question I'd like to ask the group. We've talked about a whole wide range of, of possibilities here. And I also think the essence of strategy is choice, right? You can't if we had unlimited time, unlimited resources, we'd do everything, but we don't. So we've got limited time, limited budget. So if, if in this whole strategic planning process only one thing could change, so I'm asking you to think of what your priority would be, what would that one thing be in terms of any of the what we've talked about, branches, collections, programs, services, staffing, anything else? There could only be one change. Fix our driveway. <laughs> I think the top priority for me yeah. would be to see the library able to do more diverse programming across the ages. Okay. okay. Throughout yeah. the whole yeah. system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do with the driveway. It has to do with something to do with it could be done in any of the, the, uh, of the many branch, branches like, that we've like got. Like a pan branch or system wide. I want to see idea. more yeah. more yeah. programming. Okay. And so which are the groups that are being underserved that you're Oh the seniors working? are being underserved. People yeah. over sixty five are being underserved in programming, I think. Mm -hmm. Big time. We always hear about the kids program and kids program, yeah. but I think there's so much that needs to be done. We saw that in the surveys. People yeah. say, yeah. 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 You know. and yet on the, on the other hand, some of the branches I recall going into, there were groups of seniors sitting yep. around doing stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I think formalized mm -hmm. topics that could be there to introduce to, to interest the seniors across mm -hmm. across the yeah. And I think getting them out like a, a social part like. We, I talked earlier about the you know Scrabble and chess clubs or whatever, and that gets people out to see all the other services. Mm -hmm. So it's a communications tool also, yeah, but okay. having it you know out, not just mm -hmm. in Lindsay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about other? <laughs> what about people we haven't heard from maybe this afternoon? <laughs> I like what somebody was saying earlier yeah. that. I feel really stupid that a library to me has always been in books. Mm -hmm. And now just from this meeting here, I've heard so many different other things that it offers yeah. and can potentially offer. Yeah. But me walking through that front door, still don't know except for books. Mm -hmm. If yeah. there was some way of having, what you said, a list of everything that's yeah. offered. Yeah. Yeah. Print it big so we could read you know? it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? yeah. Did so you know? Did 
idea yeah, they can yeah. see yeah. your choices quickly and easily, which can also grow the websites. Yeah. 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 I think that would be a good start and a simple yeah. start. Right? Yeah. 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 Which should also yeah. be communicated to the community. I think. Yeah. Oh, but the beyond just the, doesn't yeah. know some yeah. way of. Well, I don't know, a yeah. newspaper or a flyer, whatever, mm -hmm. all the mm -hmm. things that are available here. I don't know, they don't know. It can, be, know. It can so be a bit tricky to learn these know. applications, so, yeah. you know, we need a little insight to help that side of the library. Or even outside, yeah, it's a good idea, outside, yeah. 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 outside so that people can see, did yeah. you know? You know, in fairly big type. Okay, so we heard about awareness building and all those sort of dimensions of that, about programs. What other top priorities would you like to see come out of the plan? Well, Sue's really, you know, you kind of look at the big picture. to do a program that's here yeah. in that I've I've joined the book club that's at this branch mm -hmm. and that's the first program I've ever done in mm -hmm. the city of Quartha Lakes Library. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's very social. To <laughs> <laughs> discuss the books? Yeah, we do. We only had one book we discussed. We're pretty really new. But we're working. We're working. I think my wife's book club is more about wine drinking than yeah. books. Yeah, that's right here. We don't have the license. I just watched it again yesterday. Book club. It was oh, kind of fun. Yeah. That is a good one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I do enjoy it. Any other quick thoughts about wow. sort of top priorities? That uh, uh, yes, yes. I, I I think that you need to discover what has utility. Okay, you know that you're providing a service. Okay, people don't come in here for fun. They come in here because they need something. You need, for every community that the library is in, you need to discover what has utility for the people in that community, and then you won't have to drag them in, they'll come in because it has utility for them. And, and that's really what life is about, especially when you're a senior, you know, when it is a little extra effort to do some of these, you know, other things, other activities, they will do the things that has utility for them. So if you discover what that is, and I'm not saying that I know, but I'm just saying if you discover what that is, because like no one's going to come in here just to spend some time a day because it's a nice thing to do. Sad to say, I mean it, it should Casey be like. Oh, maybe that's the utility. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know we're we're here because this meeting has some utility for us, right? Yeah. 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 That's why we that's why we bother to take the time to come here and, and do. But that. it's also fun. It is also fun. <laughs> <laughs> and and the the whole social part of you know Sue coming to a book club and and you know bringing other people into the library through other social uh, activities. Yeah. Sad thing is I see all of these other phases on other committees that I've sat on. <laughs> <laughs> so this may be a bad analogy, but it might be parts of the library are a bit like the banking system, you know, so you can you can do all your banking at your desk if you want to and never have to leave your, your house. Mm -hmm. You can go to the ATM machine and do it that way, and a lot of people still like to go and talk to the bank. Yeah, yeah. You know, get out and you know, <laughs> exchange paper money and things yeah, like that. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> are you um, thinking of the representative at our local bank? And almost almost talking to a person you can imagine. <laughs> we we had a loquacious bank. Uh, well, it's well, it's actually it's interesting you should say that because when you look at supermarkets, okay, uh, they are now training people to check themselves out, mm -hmm. to yes. use a credit card, not to ask anybody for help, and uh, to, to, to act on their own. I mean, it's, it's sort of anti-community. Um, th th these are huge corporations that have got an awful lot of money to drive their employees in a direction to direct you to live your life like that. So they will and, require and so fewer, fewer employees. So, so, well, there's fewer employees, but we're also being trained. Okay, we've been trained to behave like well, that. Well, yeah, as long as if you let yourself be trained, Steve, that's the thing. Our uh, local supermarket just got rid of the uh, one eight the aisle. You know, the, oh, yeah. You got just a few items because their strategy is to yeah. drive people. So you can't do a quick checkout anymore. You got to wait in a long line. So mm. people will be going well, to the supermarket. So and then they're going to order it online. Order your food to be delivered well, that's what by Uber. What's actually happening is that they have one or two yeah. fewer tellers 
Yeah. Yeah. And, and the one to try out, check out is like around the, the next aisle. And, and see, so it's like, oh, yeah, I want to get out of here. I'll go to the south check out. Right? Yeah. It's, it's, very, it's very subtle. It's very, very subtle. Yeah. There are a whole lot of things that library banks don't do. That's true. Yeah. So that's why it's a bad analogy. But there seem to be aspects of it that you want to sort of personal touch. And as I mentioned earlier, I think there's a lot of that that goes on in this system where everybody knows the library mm -hmm. and we're talking with them. He, her, it's warm and her. It's, it's, uh, social experience when you come and do the, the library here, more so than in Toronto, mm -hmm. um, as an example. Mm -hmm. Other main priorities in the library system, recommendations you'd like to see come out of this study, the strategy. You guys, like, haven't heard anything from you. I live in this building. <laughs> I know everything. <laughs> and I they put them in the vault, they put a bed in there for me to experience. It's fun here. I love it. Cancel the interlibrary loans. I'm upset. I know. I know. Yeah. Besides, who really write to about it? Yeah. I had three books. Excuse waiting. me. Who said then for cost saving? Or oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's very. Yeah. Well, it's kind of interesting, by the way. The fellow who's screen here in Ontario. How long ago his brother, <laughs> who was mayor of Toronto, wanted to do away with That's all right, the libraries in Toronto. <sighs> And it's hard to believe, but uh, they want to you? dumb everybody down <laughs> <laughs> to their level. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <I'm like> that. <laughs> so on the question yeah. of your library loan, since you raised yeah. it, uh, you've got three books on order from outside. Uh, if the library had to charge postal for those, say it was five bucks a book, would you be still willing yes. to be paid? Okay. What That's about the others? No, I wouldn't. Uh, Depends on how I yeah. really, you know, how much I really want to read that book. Yeah. Into the library mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and uh, that would be too much. That's what I'm Well, I mean, yeah. if you're doing it once a week or every three, four yeah, days. I'm doing genealogy. I need this <laughs> book. <laughs> <laughs> it's well, it's so sad of, because the whole book. concept of libraries is it's free. <coughs> and to put the onus on the libraries now to say, charge you. Yeah. And it may happen, but I hate to think that's going to happen. Right. Plus the fact that by doing that charging part, you're going to be driving more and more people away from libraries. They're going online. Mm -hmm. Or especially well, people who can't afford it. Well, they're yeah. going. Yeah. 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 They're going to be stupid. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, it's a good idea to keep it moving, but yeah. I really hate the idea that you did that. It's very short-sighted and stupid. Mm -hmm. Just a uh, comment about genealogy reminded me any comments on the local history collection, archives, uh, which are typically unique to any library system? Uh, Is that like, uh, yeah. 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 Um, it, it would be it nice if they could, we could have the IT system <coughs> incorporate Find My Pass so that branches, you didn't mm. have to go to Lindsay and book in time. And, because that doesn't happen in my life. So mm -hmm. if it came, you know, you had a, they could route it through the different branches. Mm -hmm. So sure. internally in your library loan sort of within the different branches? For, yeah, for, or, for this Find My Pass, which is supposed to be better than Ancestry, which oh, isn't okay. helping me any. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. What about digitizing some of the local collection? I guess that's. Uh, I'm not local, so that wouldn't help me a bit, but it might help a lot of other people. Right. Mm -hmm. That's an archives question, but anyway. But the genealogy you're looking for isn't local? No. Okay. No. But there's a lot of people that are looking mm -hmm. locally, and it would be nice if, if it was spread out instead of, mm -hmm. yeah. in, you know, yeah. or you had access that it could be. Transferred to the branch when Probably somebody used wanted the it. local history collection or ever visited it. Oh, we do all the time at the museum. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We just sent it to you guys for sure. I have seen people using it, you know, to trace back stuff. Too. Mm -hmm. Good. Mm -hmm. Any other? Ideas, recommendations. Are we near the end? 
Uh, yeah. <laughs> so as soon as you leave, we'll come up with about five. Yeah. <laughs> but if you do, then you can. Then how do we, yeah. we tell these? Hey, I have yeah. this great idea. How do we get how that to them? How do we connect to you? This how does Macy connect to you? This is our cue to give out some cards. <laughs> Uh, oh, if anybody, if anybody would like a business card, we have some, so uh, just let me know. Do you have a credit card, too? Well, <laughs> don't don't be crazy. <laughs> anyway, I'll leave those there if anybody would like them. But uh, if you wake up in the middle of the night, some brilliant idea. Write it down. <laughs> um, just want to thank everybody for coming out this afternoon. Yeah. Have a nice day. It was very uh, interesting. It's yeah, a good it was meeting. good. As a as a gift for coming, we do have some orange pens, and the tip <laughs> is um, oh. uh, a tablet pointer oh. as well. Oh, oh. Very nice.